Okay, uh, <clears throat> so let's start with today's lecture. It's on uh, SQL, introduction to SQL, and in uh, that like we'll start the basics of like how to insert records, update records, and delete them using uh, SQL. So, uh, I mean, up until now, what we have learned is like how to design a database using those ER diagrams, like, uh, and then how to refine the design, uh, convert the design into uh, a relational model, and then um, normalize the tables. So we've seen how normalization works so that we don't have redundancies in the data. So now that we have like uh, removed all the redundancies and we have like a, uh, a schema of the database that we have in front of us, what should we do with it, right? So the, the first thing is that we need to translate that design and make it a fully functional database. That's what this lecture is about. So let's start with SQL, like where does it come from? So it's pronounced as SQL and SQL, like you've heard me say. So some people call it SQL, some call it SQL, uh, but the point is that it is the de facto standard for creating and querying relation, relational databases. So like I said, our primary purpose here is to, in this class, in the whole semester, is to introduce SQL, like the how to build a database, um, starting from the design up until uh, like this class, uh, then finally data do like construct a database and then we will start learning how to use it effectively okay uh, so SQL or SQL is uh, the most common or the underlying language for relational uh, database systems and it is uh, an accepted US standard by the uh, American National Standards Body which is ANSI and the Federal Information uh, Processing Standard and also like it's an international standard. You guys must have heard uh, ISOs, right? International Organization for the Standards or the International Standards Organization. So it has been accepted as an international standard by ISO as well. That's why any uh, database that you see out there which is relational, uh, you're most likely, in fact, 99.9% .9 going to see it running over SQL. It can have different flavors, like it can be uh, Oracle, it can be uh, SQL Server, Microsoft SQL Server, or it can be MySQL, PostgreSQL, but all of these underneath run this language that we are learning. So we are not learning a system, right? Yes, for our uh, implementation, we are using MySQL because it's freeware, but MySQL runs this language, which is SQL. Oracle runs the same language with a small like modifications uh, uh, and we'll see like uh, what those are. So uh, the first thing, what is an RDBMS? So the definition of an RDBMS is it's a database or RDBMS again first, it's a relational database management system. So it's a management system that manages all these collections of data tables uh, and their relationships. In other words, the ER diagrams that you drew or you know how to draw now, uh, you can take them, put them in a relational database management system. For us, we are using MySQL as the relational database management system. We can use Oracle as well and SQL Server as well, for that matter, like I said. Where does SQL come from? Uh, the concepts of this relational database uh, technology uh, that we have seen uh, in earlier classes were first uh, introduced in the 70s by Edgar Codd. Uh, and like he wrote a uh, academic paper uh, uh, for developing like large shared data banks. Uh, so he was in IBM um, at that time. Uh, so they used uh, a language called SQL. 
and later it was named as SQL, but SQL is uh, still often how it's pronounced because that's how they intended, like that's how they defined it in the beginning. Um, now since then like there have been many revisions many versions uh, and you can see like all the timeline here the book gives you a bit uh, history as well but uh, like since 2000 2000s like 2006 refined uh, the editions and made like compatible with other standards as XML um, and other like worldwide web uh, standards uh, then 2008 it improved analytics like query capabilities and so on and uh, currently like it is the most uh, supported version in any database management system okay and why uh, SQL was needed again uh, you need some kind of standard like everybody these days works uh, over the internet over uh, the web but those uh, technologies have underlying standards as well, right? So one side needs to know what an HTTPS is or how it works or what it means. Similarly, how does HTML work? How should your web pages be rendered? All these things come out of standards that everybody agrees upon. And then once somebody writes a web page in one corner of the world, in the other, the same web page is read the same way. It's not that you wanted your table to be or, or your, like your logo to be placed on the center of the page but in the other person systems it's nowhere to be seen or it's on the right side of the page and this and that, right? So where you intended it to be, the other person can only get to that information if you are following a standard and the other person that's looking at the page is following the same standard, right? So similarly for data interactions, databases, we need standards as well or we needed standards as well that's where this SQL came from so it defined basic data structures basic operations uh, and so on okay and then these things like referential integrity transaction management how to have join operations extended joins this that so we learned some of these things in this class not all of them because again um, we don't have enough time in a semester and these things are like more advanced like transaction management but uh, we'll learn the basics of this standard so like I said uh, there are some benefits uh, of these standards um, and like I said earlier different database vendors can use different constructs in their SQL versions uh, so that's where the slight difference comes in. For instance, somebody calls uh, date as a date data type in their version. In the other database, it might be called uh, time FPS, for instance, or something else. But they're essentially doing the same thing. So the name of naming of the constructs, how they're used may be slightly different. Uh, but the underlying technology is that you need to represent date and time how it's done or using which command that may slightly different otherwise uh, sql itself is 90 to 95 percent same across any database vendor okay so what is the purpose of these standards first reduce training costs right so training in an organization can concentrate on one language a large labor pool of uh, IS professionals trained in a common language reduces this retraining of newly hired employees, for instance. Right? And then uh, the book lists productivity. So IS professionals can learn SQL through uh, like thoroughly and uh, become proficient uh, from continuous use. An organization can afford to invest in tools to help these professionals become more productive. And since they are familiar with the language in which these programs are written, they can more quickly maintain the existing programs. Hence, productivity increases. Then portability, like I said, you can move from one system or one geographical location to another. They can move from one context to another. Uh, 
when each environment uses SQL. So in some cases, uh, companies have used, uh, let's say, uh, Microsoft SQL Server for long. Then they think, oh, it's cost prohibitive. prohibitive. We can't carry on with Microsoft licenses anymore. So what they can do is they can take the system and port it to MySQL or Oracle or whatever, right? Because the databases have underlying SQL standards. Yes, there are some caveats. Like I said, they need to change their constructs a little bit, but it's not a uh, lock-in kind of situation that you're locked in to use SQL Server all your life. So that increases the portability as well if everybody adheres to this or a standard. Longevity, application longevity, uh, standard languages or standards like HTML for instance tend to remain for a long time. There will be little pressure to rewrite old applications. You can find old HTML pages working 99% the same. Now we have new versions of HTML, XHTML, DHTML but the underlying HTML language stays the same. Similarly, the underlying SQL stays the same, right? So older applications written in the earlier, earlier versions of SQL still work, right? So applications can simply be updated as the standard language is enhanced or new versions of these database management systems are introduced. Then reduce dependence on a single vendor. Like I gave you the example of Microsoft, the same thing applies here. Like training, educational services, application software, consulting assistance, all these things uh, have a lowered price and hence improved service if you adhere to a standard. Cross system communication, same thing. Uh, different database management systems and applications uh, can more easily communicate and cooperate in managing data and processing user programs. Okay. Now standards are good, but they still have some disadvantages. What? Okay, let's let's talk about a little bit of that. Uh, a standard can stifle creativity and innovation to an extent. Why? Because one standard is never enough to meet all the needs, right? And an industry standard can be far from ideal because it may be the offspring of compromises between many parties. That's how these standards are written, right? And then standards may be difficult to change, right? Because everybody has or some vendors have vested interests in them. So fixing de deficiencies may take a considerable effort. Now, since vendors typically extend standards with proprietary features, Application portability is not always complete. That's the little caveat that I just said. That if you need to port from one system to another, it's not a 100% correspondence all the time. You might need something to be done by hand. So it's not always complete. Then you may need to change SQL statements when migrating uh, from one system to another, right? Uh, then I gave you the example of. But why SQL, right? So th let's look at, at this standard data. So this is, so if you only look at the titles, right, the, the boldface characters. So at the top, you have a table name, customer information. This is coming from your ER design, right? So ER, this was a uh, entity. So your entity is customer information. And the entity has several attributes. What are the attributes? Each customer has an ID, first name, last name. Each customer has a phone number and an address, right? If you represent all this information in tabular form, you will have something like this. Yes? Okay. With everybody having their own IDs, their first name, last name, and so on. Okay. Now, if you look at the table, or if you have like a, in, in a human language, your description will be something like this, that show me the data stored in the ID or give me the last name of all the customers, right? Can you do that looking at this table? Yes, you can. You can go to this column and 
get all these last names, Hatfield, Mustaine, whatever, right? Angus Young and whatever. Um, so in SQL, the same thing, like the human thing can be translated to a query that go to this database or go to this table and get me this, this, this information. So for instance, we can write a SQL statement as that select all these attributes, give me the ID, the first name, last name, phone, address, from, then you give a table name, right? So it's very uh, sort of intuitive um, language. So in SQL, you can get multiple things, only a single column. If you say select last name from customer information, it will only give you this column. If you need two columns, it will give you that. So depending on how your human language uh, query is phrased, you can translate that into a SQL query almost uh, uh, like on a one-to-one -one basis and quite easily. So comprehension of SQL is easy. Okay, so That's why uh, or that's how this language was written to be as close as to the human understanding to make it as user-friendly as possible. Okay. Okay, um, so since uh, we are working with MySQL, MySQL workspace, so in MySQL, when you start your workspace, as like the developer notes will have you do, or like the, uh, like when you start, like I'm sure you should have installed the database by now, when you start uh, implementing the projects, assignments, so on, you will see that when you log in, you are in a workspace, right? So in the workspace on the left, you have some uh, catalogs or they call them schemas or something like that. So what you need to learn is that the whole engine is that relational database management system, which is your MySQL workspace. In that, you have something called a catalog. Catalog is those uh, big database signs that you see um, uh, in the workspace and uh, like when I when I put the uh, developer notes out there I'll show you like what what those things are so catalog is essentially a set of uh, uh, tables so you can think of a schema as a table so a set of tables that constitute the description of a whole database now you may have different databases. One is a database for a university. You may, in the same system, you can develop a database for a car dealership. In the same database, you can do develop a uh, uh, database or, uh, or so in the same system, you can develop a database uh, for something else like a sports uh, tournament, something like that, right? So these are all different catalogs. So the, the real name for these things is catalogs. Okay, so you have a university catalog, you have a car dealership catalog, you have a sports tournament catalog. In each of these catalogs, you can have different uh, tables. Okay, so in the university database, you can have tables to store student information, their grades information, professor information, classes information, semester information, and so on, right? So these are those schemas. These are those ER diagrams. Right, so these structures contain description of all those objects that are created by a user. So anything, the tables, the views, constraints, like what these things mean, views, constraints, we'll talk about those, but constraints, I think you've seen in ER already, those integrity constraints, refresher constraints, where you have a key relating to another table and so on. Uh, so a schema, for a database is a collection of all the tables, okay? So first, your system or SQL environment, which is our workspace, has can have different catalogs. In each catalog, you will have um, a schema. And the schema is a collection of all those uh, tables and objects and all those things, okay? Then we have three things in this SQL environment. One is called the DDL, the data definition language. 
like the name states, you can define these structures in the schema. Okay. Commands that define a database, like creating, altering, dropping, establishing constraints, and all these things. Then manipulation language. So first you define something, then you can manipulate those objects that you've created. Get data out of them, put data in them, uh, and do all kinds of like different queries. Okay, so commands that can maintain a query and query a database. That's why it's called a manipulation language. And there is control language. Like the third part is called a control language. And again, like all these are parts of this SQL environment. Okay, so DDL, DML, DCL, they are all parts of SQL. So in the third part of SQL, you have a data control language that controls access to the database. Security, privacy, those kind of things are included in this component. So in our class, we're going to deal with only these first two. We're not concerned about because we don't have the time uh, to look at how users are created, how groups are created, how permissions are granted, how um, logs are generated. So we're not doing all of that. We're only learning how to define a database and how to manipulate it. Okay. So we are only going to use these parts of the SQL environment. The first uh, uh, four bullets. That's what we are studying. Okay. This class uh, specifically is uh, uh, dealing with this first part, which is defining the database. Right. So this figure basically shows you graphically how the uh, things relate to each other. Now you have already created a design, a logical design. Remember right so you created an er diagram you normalized it finally you have some logical design in front of you of all those schemas or tables right so you have a whole database schema in front of you so the database schema consists of individual table schemas right so this ddl will take that logical database design and define a physical uh, database design okay so you will create tables you can create indexes views we are not dealing with these you can establish keys primary keys foreign keys and then you can drop tables uh, truncate them and etc okay so ddl is the language that database designers will use to create a database essentially okay it comes in part of maintenance as well because you may need to create new tables, you may need to drop tables and so on. But essentially it's for taking the logical design to a physical uh, correspondence. Then manipulation, like I said earlier, uh, you can insert, update, select things in a database. Okay, So you're now implementing whatever physical uh, tables you created in or on your computer's memory you're implementing those okay or dealing with those again it can be part of maintenance as well and then finally how to access revoke grant privileges to the database becomes part of the data control language which is not our uh, what do you say uh, focus of learning in this class okay so we are only dealing with the first two parts so let's jump into uh, the data definition language okay so like I said earlier so this is uh, the data definition language is associated with creating or creating the database so there are major create statements like there are three major create statements that you can create something first is create schema remember those three three databases that i said university car dealership and a sports database you can have all these or 15 20 thousand whatever databases in your database management system 
when you say create a schema, what we are saying is create a database for a specific purpose. So it defines a portion of that database that is owned by a particular user in that database management system. So for you, you are the only user on your system. You've installed that workspace. So when you say create uh, schema or create database, you're creating a special instance or a location where you will host all your tables. Okay, so that's the first step. And once we do the uh, lab, I mean, you will know what I mean. So first step is you create a um, schema or a database. Then in that, you can create tables. So tables define, you can define new tables and their columns. Again, where do these come from? They come from, remember, ER to relational design. So ER diagrams have those uh, boxes. Each box becomes a table and uh, the attributes become the columns of the table. Similarly, some relationships will become tables as well, most of them. Then there is something called a view, which we'll see like towards the end of the uh, semester. Views are logical tables that you can create. You can have create view, like you can create a view where you can, uh, they're not actual physical tables, but you can create logical ones so you can join them, etc., uh, in a logical manner to generate some queries. Okay, but for now, we're only dealing with creating a schema and then or, or a database and then putting some tables in that schema or database, right? So there are other create statements as well, assertion, domain, etc., which we are not associated with in this class. Then to create these tables, so you have, let's say you have 50, uh, five columns. You have to store the person's name, age, ID, etc. right? So how do you store those? How do you put these in columns? So the first thing to note is uh, you have to specify a data type for each of those attributes. That in this column, I'm only going to store integers. In this column, I'm only going to store dates. In this column, I'm going to store alphanumeric characters and so on, right? So SQL has several data types built in. And depending on the flavor of your SQL or the uh, relational database management system, slight uh, like things may be changed. And some books mention some data types, other books mention other data types. So that's why I give you two slides from two different books here, okay? So for instance, in this book, they say that you can have characters or which are called cars to define characters. You have variable characters that can have ca this term, var char, or you can define them as var char two. You can have booleans, you can have timestamps, you can have integers defined as int, you can have numeric defined as numeric and so on. Another book says the same thing in another manner. So it says that character things can be defined by char, you can have var char, uh, you can have booleans, uh, you can have integers. See, this one does not even mention numeric. It says only you can use int, short int, you can use float, you can use decimal and so on. So what data type to use? You'll have to play around with that and uh, like our workspace is intuitive in the sense that uh, it's an autocomplete. When you type something like I, it'll, it'll give you the options that do you want an int, you want a uh, short int and so on. Um, so first step is uh, like there are data types that you can use to define your columns. Okay. So specific steps identify uh, data types for attributes that we've seen in the last slide. Before that, obviously you need to know what tables are there, what attributes are in each table, which again comes from the ER design. Once you have that, okay, you identify the data types for each attribute. Let's say at table creation, you thought that one data type fits, but when you start inserting data, you say, oh no, I need to change this. 
instead of only uh, characters or instead of only integers i need to install uh, i need to store alphanumeric characters for instance ssn right so social security numbers have ints um, as the digits but you have those dashes in there as well right so if you need to store the dashes then you need to change the data type from a numeric or an int to something else where care maybe okay and there are ways to do that and we'll learn that but again you need to identify the exact or the uh, right data type for an attribute then you can need to identify columns that can have null values meaning that no values exist for that if no value exists should your database run right if not uh, what can happen then identify columns that must be unique like there are candidate keys and from these you need to identify primary and foreign keys and again these number three and four is expected that during your design you should have already done that in the er design then if you need to have some default values right if you don't enter or if a user does not enter a value for a specific column do you need a default value do you sh should you have one so these are the things that you need to design uh, or define at database creation time then you need to identify constraints on column columns like i said domain specif specifications that this uh, column will hold values from this given domain for instance uh, uh, what do you say like uh, college levels you can either be a freshman sophomore junior senior or like for undergrad students that is right so if you're an undergrad student you can be only four uh, like your domain can consist of only four values so during database design you can you can and you should specify that in this field or in this column the value will come from only these four values so you need to have some constraints on columns defined as well again if your database needs that you sh you may not always need that okay so it depends on what you're storing and what your database needs to hold then in the seventh step you will start creating the table and then you can create indices on the tables to make uh, your access faster but again it's an advanced topic and we are not dealing with that so we are going to create the table and that's it okay and again ddl is used for table creation and it allows you to implement all these items here is ddl a different thing no it's again part of sql we are just learning sql I'm just telling you that this is only part of the DDL. Uh, we don't even know which commands specify the DDL, which are uh, DML and so on. But we are just uh, giving you, or like, I'm just giving you a logical uh, differentiation. But all we are doing is learning SQL. So this slide basically shows you the overall structure for a create table statement right so let's start reading this so you so the things in bold are um, language keywords or sql keywords so you have to write this thing that create table so this is the command that will create a table by which name you will give a name here which is italicized so create table something like uh, customer information or student information so create table you give a table name okay then now these things in parentheses in brackets and so on are uh, optional you can write these if you don't that's fine as well so in the cleanest version let's say we are saying create table you give it a name and then you come down here and you say column name and you give the data types of that column name and then if you have any constraint you can define those 
that's it right so this like uh, the graphic basically shows that the table will have a name some number of column definitions and table constraints if you need them and uh, then we will see how to create these but uh, like I said earlier, a table is uh, something that's physically stored in the database. It's persistent, meaning if you turn off your system, turn your uh, workspace engine MySQL workspace on again, it should be there. Okay, it exists unless it's dropped. So that's why it's persistent. Okay, so create table is followed by the name of the relation and a list of attributes and their data types at a minimum. Okay, something like this. So create table, students, and then we have these attributes. So PID is a var char of eight characters. Name is of character, this length. And you have another attribute address, which is of this data type of these many characters. You close this parenth uh, parentheses and end the SQL statements with a semicolon. So you should end your SQL statements with a semicolon. Uh, some uh, DBMSs will let you run your query without a semicolon, but it's always better to end your statements with a semicolon, okay? So in the following slides, we're gonna create tables for uh, this ER diagram, okay? Uh, so we have a customer table that has a customer ID and name, and then you have a product table with these attributes. Uh, you have an order table, then you have a uh, associative entity, and these are the relationships. Right. Um, so order is placed by uh, many customer. Uh, yeah, there is no constraint. So order is placed by customers, and a customer can place many orders. Right. Uh, so an order is placed by one customer, and uh, a single customer can uh, place many orders, and so on. So we're gonna. Uh, write create table statements for this thing okay so create table we give it a table name okay we just call it customer underscore t underscore t to represent that this is a table and it's coming from this er diagram can you name it something else yes you can call it create table xyz but again, name your tables to something that makes sense, right? Similar to ER diagrams. You can use the same name, in fact. Create table, customer. You don't need this underscore T. But in the book, they used underscore T to uh, differentiate uh, between a table and an ER model, okay? Just, just like that. And again, this is not our book. It's these slides are coming from another book. Uh, just to give you another perspective is that book better no you should read your book as well but this is giving you a different perspective okay and that's the purpose of the class that i'll give you multiple perspectives of the same thing okay so don't um, uh, skip on your reading as well because you might learn or you can learn different things uh, from a different perspective if you don't understand let's say during slides but anyway, so you create a table, you give it a table name, and in the parentheses, right, either you can write it in a single line like this, or you can write it this way. Again, reading-wise, this way is more uh, helpful, right? Because if you look, this looks a bit convoluted. The information is... Uh, lost in there you have to specifically go look for what the data type of name is and so on but here you look at a quick glance customer name is a var cap okay and it's not null 
So create table, custom, uh, uh, table name in the parentheses, attributes, their data types, followed by so attribute space, any number of spaces, data type, and uh, then you can specify whether it can be null or not. Okay, and we'll see in the coming slides what that means specifically. Uh, then in the end, you can say there is a primary key right so customers primary key is the primary key so in this table i create a new primary key called customer pk and i define that primary key to be this attribute which is customer id that's what this statement means similarly look at this order table so orders primary key is order id right So you create your table, give it a name, the attributes, their data types, anything can be null or not. Uh, then you say constraint, I am creating this key as a primary key, which is this attribute. Okay. And then you can say, you can generate foreign keys. Remember foreign keys from the ER? The same thing is here. Constraint, I am generating this foreign key. Uh, that is referencing this attribute um, in my table which is this to this tables this attribute which takes control of this relationship okay because this is primarily uh, like customer ID is primary here so this customer ID is referencing that primary okay similarly in order line uh, not order line uh, yeah order line will have these primary keys as well and remember associative entity once you change it into uh, what did you say uh, from ER to relational you will have these keys in this table as well so look at the slides of ER to relational, that class, and you will understand what or where do these attributes come from, right? So order ID in the, uh, sorry, order line has only one attribute in the ER, right? Which is quantity, but it has these two other attributes coming from these two tables in the design, uh, in the relational design that is, which you need to write in here. And then you will say that these are referencing which um, attributes of the original tables. Okay, so this will give you an overall or this slide gives you an overall table definition of this diagram. And I have written like note here that it's coming or this specification is written for Oracle. Why? Because in, in uh, MySQL, your date type may not be this default sys date or something. It may be something else. It may not be using number. It may using uh, may be using numeric data type. But those are the only small things. The otherwise design and how to create table command works, etc. They are all the same in SQL. Okay. So each column, like I said earlier, has a data type. So in this case, like some are numeric and some are character, which is text, which is varchar defined by varchar. Some are decimals, some are integers. Um, so you can de define column size as well, like I said earlier. So for numeric columns, you can specify whether they will be integer, which is this product ID, or allow decimal values, which is the standard price. And then you give uh, um, their decimal places that store only two decimal places for a six digit number at max product id will have an 11 digit number at max and it cannot be null and in here there's another thing called a check so what we are saying is that product finish is varchar but check that this product finish is one of these and that's how you write this thing Remember those four uh, levels, uh, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, right? 
So it can be written something like this. That check student level in sophomore, uh, sorry, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Same thing. Here we are saying our product finish can be either of these six values. Cherry, natural ash, white ash, so on. Okay. Then null. So what is null? So SQL allows for null or unknown values. So you can read the book on how SQL treats comparisons using null. But remember that in some cases null is not allowed. Okay, specifically primary keys can have, cannot have null values. You need to have some value defined for a key to be primary. Okay. So here, since product ID is the primary key, you have to say that this is not null. All of these others can be null. So a record can exist without these things, but it needs to have a primary key. Okay, that's what this statement says, or this not null at uh, command is saying. Again, if you look, some things are capitalized, some are not. Again, it's a better practice SQL will let you write this create table with lowercase as well. Should you? Uh, it's not preferred. The preferred way is to write the language commands all uppercase and your things in lowercase or mixed case uh, characters. So hence all the language specific things, number, not null, uh, these data types, primary key keywords constraint, they're all written as uppercase. You should try to develop the same convention, makes your code reading easier, okay? Or understanding easier. Now let's see what's happening here. So order line, remember what was order line? Order line was an associative entity with there is no primary key. Then what? But if you remember, when you take it to design, like ER to relational, those keys come from the tables that it is combining. So they are both primary keys, or they are both part of the primary key. Hence, your primary key is something called a composite. So that's what we're defining here. We're defining the table the attributes, the key uh, attributes, their data types, they're not null. And then you're saying that I'm defining this primary key to be a composite of these two. And that's how you write this, right? So this primary key is composite composed of multiple attributes or two or more attributes. And that's how you define it. And then foreign keys, I already told you, what that means and again everything ends with a semicolon opening parentheses here closed here then semicolon okay now like I said earlier you can have some domain constraints this is an example of that so here what we see is a domain constraint that limits of number of allowed values to be from here like I said earlier check operator ensures um, that update and insert attempts to this table will only allow these values or one of the values that's listed here right however note another thing product finish does not prohibit null values so what if you don't enter a value should your record proceed Yes, of course, because in the database design, you never said that this product finish should be not null, right? So it can have either of these values or none at all. If you try to put any other value, that record will be rejected, okay? So it is possible to insert a record while leaving this product finish uh, without a value at all. And then you can give default values as well. 
and that's the syntax so for instance in here we are saying that order date is of date type and the default is take whatever the system's date is that's what we are saying here you can give or you can hard code a specific default value as well okay so for instance in product finish you can say check this 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 and then say default uh, walnut for instance so if no value is provided walnut will be the default okay instead of it being null it will take the default value of walnut then like i said earlier here what we are seeing is the order table has a foreign key so the constraint uh, statement basically uh, creates a foreign key constraint referencing the customer's table's primary key and these referential integrity constraints like we've seen in the ER when we discussed that that it ensures that foreign key values of a table must match the primary key values of a related table in a 1 to m relationship right what it restricts is three types of things updates deletions and insertions okay so what should happen when the record is uh, deleted so it should go check in that referential integrity constraint that can i go and delete the record in this table and that table and so on so there are different ways of dealing with it but the integrity constraints fire or work on three types of records inserts updates and deletes okay so here for instance the relational integrity is being enforced via the primary key to foreign key match right so primary key to foreign key match so it it basically specifies how updates and deletes are processed when the there are dependent tables so for instance uh, if a delete request comes for a record where there are dependent records in another table so the database could deal it in three ways it can restrict the de delete first of all which means that you say oh there's a record in the other table as well so please don't or i am not letting you delete this record in this table so that's restrict the second thing is it could cascade the delete so cascade means the dependent records that match the foreign key are also deleted okay a primary example is of uh, a an employee and his dependents so in an hr system for instance if your company has given you health insurance you have dependents they have health insurance when the employee is fired uh, the employee's dependents need to be taken out of the system as well okay so that is a cascade operation or a cascading delete is called so when one record is deleted you go in the database of the dependents and delete those records as well okay or another way to uh, delete or deal with these kind of constraint is you can set it to null which means that when you delete the primary key record uh, it will result in setting all the corresponding uh, for foreign keys to be set to null right this usually implies uh, like uh, an optional one kind of cardinality in the relationship but again whether you uh, restrict cascade or delete depends on uh, the type of the problem or the nature of your problem again this slide is basically showing you that there the same thing that i said that there are three policies the default is to reject or restrict you don't uh, allow any modifications you say no you can't do it or you cascade right or you set to null so e in either of the three ways is how this um uh, like foreign key constraints are uh, written and this is the way how they are written that on update you can cascade if update or on delete you can restrict on uh, delete set it to default and this is what it essentially means okay 
so this is so up until now so this is the part where you create the database you've already created a database so that's the first step we haven't put any data yet we created the database we can create a few tables in there right now like I said earlier that if you make uh, or if you need to make corrections to the table what should you do right so the alter command uh, is usually done or written after the tables have been created for example if you have an existing database even let's say it has actual data in it you can modify the table by adding or cha changing columns in there removing columns adding constraints etc so if data in the tables violate these constraints you will be prevented from setting these constraints until after changing the data All right so whereas create table is mostly a process that takes place during implementation alter table takes place during maintenance phase usually okay so what's the command command is this that you alter table and you give a table name that alter table customer and then you give a alter table action what is this thing is one of these so alter table customer add this new column and then you say the data type or the name and the data type of this column okay or alter table customer and do this alter address give it a new name address x and drop the default for instance so here you're changing this default value and you can change the column name as well okay and this is like just uh, an example adding a column with a default value so alter table customer add this column which is this name with this type and the default value is commercial okay so you can create them you can alter them how do you remove them right so drop table is the command that allows you to drop tables command is straightforward so drop table you give it a table name semicolon and what it will do is it will drop the whole table now there the command is not straightforward because if there are other tables that depend on it like due to those key constraints uh, like if the table has a foreign key to the table being dropped the drop will fail right so therefore it makes a difference which order you drop the tables in so usually uh, uh, any tables that don't have a foreign key coming to them they are dropped first and then you can drop other tables okay so drop table will just remove the whole table all the data etc everything is gone so before dropping anything make sure you you know what you're doing and if you have a copy that's better you can copy paste your codes in another text file save them uh, before you drop anything or you like uh, start playing with these commands okay so we know how to create tables we know how to alter them we know how to remove them so table is there we need to add or start adding data in that so we have a customer table now we have 15,000 customers we need to start uh, storing their data how do we do that through insert statements okay an insert statement will add one or more rows to a table what's the command command looks something like this so insert into the table name and the keyword values and then in parentheses you give the values of the attributes in that given order okay ID for instance uh, description address city state zip if the table is is storing in that order and this command is slightly different if you look down here 
So in here you're saying insert into table values and you just give values. In here you're saying insert into table and you give the specific attribute names in which you want to enter values. So if your table accepts uh, null values for some attributes, you can maybe skip them if you don't want to enter those. And this is the way how you skip some attributes. And again, the order is the one that you list here. In here, the order is how you define the database. Okay. And then it's also possible to insert data from uh, one table to another data uh, table. And that's using this select command. So insert into this table and then what? This thing. So select this from, so when we, in the next class, when we do this or cover the select command, then you can come back to this slide 26 and see what this thing is doing or what it means. For now, just know that you can insert data in one table from another table. Okay. So we'll talk about select in the next class. Then sometimes when you create tables, uh, or you insert data, you need to insert uh, uh, default values, for instance, uh, or IDs, for instance, auto-generated IDs, that is, like values that are automatically incremented. For instance, if a company has uh, orders, so instead of saying that this is order number one, two, three, four, five, and so on, uh, you can just have them incremented automatically by the database management system okay and that is done through this identity column something called identity that customer id is generated as an identity it starts with a one it increments by one and blah 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 right so it was introduced in 2008 now it's part of the sql standard okay so an insert statement will not explicitly give a value for this identity column. Okay. So for instance, if you see the insert statement down here, it starts inserting customer values from the customer name, uh, address, city, and so on. It does not give a value for this attribute, which is the customer ID because it was written or defined as an identity column. Okay. And uh, can you define this as a primary key? Yes, you can. And often that is the case. Primary keys are often identity columns. But again, it's not always the case if your ER diagram says otherwise, then that is the case. Then let's say you have inserted some records in the table. What if you need to delete certain records? Again, delete is different from drop. A drop table will drop the whole table. A delete statement will remove certain records or rows from a given table, right? So delete certain rows. This is the command. Delete from customer, uh, which is a table name where you give a condition. Uh, so delete from customer where customer state, let's say the company has stopped working in Hawaii. So you can write this kind of statement that delete from customer where customer state is equal to Hawaii. So all those rows of data where customers had Hawaii in their uh, state, those will be deleted. If you want to delete all rows, but keep your table intact, like the structure of the table stays, the primary keys, foreign keys stays, then you can just give it this statement. Delete from table name. It will just delete all the records, but the whole structure will remain. Drop on the other hand will destroy or remove the structure as well. Okay. And again, in these deletes, etc., you can restrict cascade, set null, whatever so uh, we discussed earlier, like all those things. And finally, uh, there's an update statement. If you need to modify data in existing rows, let's say the something, the pro product price changed, right? So update this table, set 
this attribute to be this thing where certain condition do you need the condition no you can just set it directly so it will change for every record but if you're saying that only for specific records then you can give a where condition okay and uh, that is it so we have learned in today's class uh, y sql intro to sql then uh, the basics create insert delete update alter okay so these commands so do the uh, associated uh, developer guide and it should help your learning so that's it for today's class